Today is the first Sunday of Advent, uh, and I kind of want to start things all out during this uh, season uh, by talking about uh, the why behind Jesus uh, coming to earth and, you know, inhabiting flesh. Uh, and, and we've all probably heard this before, that Jesus came to earth to die on the cross for our sins. Uh, you know, that's something that is very direct. But, uh, you know, I think what that really means for us is something uh, that we we kind of should reflect on uh, every, every once in a while and be encouraged by. Uh, and this passage that we talked, that I read earlier today, 1 Corinthians 1, 3 through 9, uh, I think gives a very uh, concise and good uh example of what uh, Jesus, what God does in the life of a believer uh, beyond just salvation, uh, beyond just forgiving of our sins. Because, uh, you know, there is, you know, when we do talk about the why of the, you know, of Jesus coming to the earth and dying for our sins and everything, you know, you can get maybe into the thinking of thinking that that's it. And that's all that really matters. That that, that is all that, uh, you know, that happens there that, you know, you pray a prayer, you get forgiven of your sins and that's it. Uh, but but there is more to it. <laughs> there is more uh, to this idea. You know, Jesus did leave teachings for that reason uh, and did leave instruction for that reason. And when you look at even in the early church, you know, there was this idea of uh, discipleship, which was even more so than just praying a prayer. It was literally training people to live lives uh, as Jesus wants us to live it. Uh, but I think there's also this part that does uh, continue on with own God's own work in our own lives. And and in this passage, it is talking about this very much. This, this idea of you've been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, uh, just as Jesus, just as the testimony of Christ has been has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so this whole idea kind of in that central sort of thing is that God, you know, you know, we when we restore our relationship, God will breathe into our lives and will give us the strength and the enrichment and the gifts that are needed uh, to do the work that he wants us to do, to, uh, you know, do that work that brings about his kingdom. And that that is something that we should take encouragement for. Uh, you know, and I, I think in this, you know, this Christmas season, you know, we do talk a lot about these earthly gifts. We're all sort of thinking about it. I myself am thinking about it. I've got two nephews and a niece uh, who I still need to get presents for. I don't let my sister know that. Uh, but, you know, this time of kind of thinking of gifts and everything, I think it is kind of a, important to, you know, remember that God gives us gifts as well, that God gives us gifts as believers, and he wants us to use those gifts to further his kingdom. So my encouragement for you all is, you know, let yourselves be enriched by God. Let yourselves, uh, you know, be continued to be worked on by God. Uh, and look for those gifts. Look for those things that God has given you, those abilities that God has given you, and look and see what ways you can use those uh, to go and reach out in the world in his name. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you all to join me for our first worship song today. <laughs> 